There is perhaps no creepier place than a long winding tunnel or cave leading off into the darkness, into the confines of the earth. It instills some sort of primal dread in us, a fear we cannot escape, and leaves us to wonder just where that dim passageway leads and what things lie within it. Of course, considering the spooky nature of the tunnels, caverns, sewers, and other subterranean places, there are bound to be tales of something weird pacing about in those places beneath our feet, and there are indeed plenty. Some of the most spectacular and bizarre of reports of underground monsters prowling about down there in the depths and beyond our understanding. <laughs> case of something really strange lurking in dank underground tunnels has sort of an urban legend vibe to it. For this first story, we go to the United States in the state of South Carolina, where deep down into the service tunnels that spread out under the University of South Carolina, some of which date back to the 1800s, have long been said to haunt the nearby residents with a humanoid creature. Sightings of something bizarre lurking down there begin in November of 1949 when a student of the university by the name of Christopher Nichols was walking along in front of the Longstreet Theater one evening when he was startled by a humanoid figure wearing what he described as a silver suit who crossed the street, opened a manhole cover, and disappeared down into the tunnels below. Eventually when it hit the school newspaper, they called it the Sewer Man, but this would not be the last sighting of whatever it was. In April of 1950, a police officer was in the area when he had a rather frightening encounter of his own. As he went about his patrol in the same vicinity of the original sighting, he came across a pile of what looked like discarded animal remains, still covered in blood that had been mauled and mutilated by some sort of animal, he thought. As he ran his flashlight over the scene, the beam caught the sight of a hunched over figure wearing what he described as a silver suit in the shadows, which he also described having gray skin and being grotesque in appearance. And even more strangely, of all the officer reported that the thing had a third eye right in the center of its forehead. The humanoid creature allegedly scowled at the police officer and scurried down into the tunnel system leaving behind the bodies of the mutilated animals. The strange encounter of the creature would gain the name of the Third Eye Man, and sightings would continue into the 1960s and 70s, with one particular harrowing report describing the thing charging a group of university fraternity members with murderous intent. With all of the reports coming in, of some possibly deranged psychopath prowling the area. The tunnels then were thoroughly searched to find not a trace of what was being reported. In order to be safe and secure the safety of the residents, the tunnels were mostly sealed off from the outside world. But there are enough ways to get in for adventurous curiosity seekers, and there have supposedly been sightings of the Third Eye Man. Considering that there is very little to verify these tales, there is the distinct possibility that this is all an urban legend. Could this be a deranged man scouring around the tunnels? Or could it be some sort of bizarre abomination? Who knows?
A very strange account with some sort of humanoid creature comes from 1978 in Toronto, Canada. Within the dark confines of the various networks of tunnels and caves under the vast cities, a 51-year-old man known only as Ernest had a strange and frightening encounter in August of that year. The witness claims that he had been out searching the neighborhood for a missing kitten from a litter he had been raising with his wife when he stumbled across a tunnel entrance and decided to get a flashlight and investigate where it led, hoping to find his missing cat in the process. He claims that he penetrated around 10 feet into the murky cave and suddenly came across a creature that looked like a long and thin monkey and being around 3 feet in height, with large teeth and covered in gray fur, the unsettling eyes which peered out of the darkness from deep sockets were described as being bright orange and slanted. Ernest reported that the creature actually spoke to him. Quote, I saw a living nightmare that I'll never forget. It said, go away, go away, in a hissing, gurgly voice. Then it turned around and took off down a long tunnel, off to the side. I then got out of there as fast as I could. I was shaking with fear. End quote. Ernest would later tell the Toronto newspaper of this frightening experience after being encouraged by a friend to do so, and he refrained from giving his last name out of fear that he would be ridiculed. Staff from the Toronto Sun even went as far as to accompany Ernest to the location of his strange sighting in March of 1979, and they found that indeed there was the entrance to a cave at the end of a passageway between two houses which led into a narrow tunnel and they were led to the unseen sewer system down below. When they investigated the tunnel, they did not see any strange creature, but they did find the maimed carcass of a cat half buried into the ground. When sewer workers were questioned about what Ernest had perhaps seen, an employee gave a rather ominous statement, saying, quote, People who work on the surface just don't know what it's like down there. It's a whole different world. Who would have thought a few years ago that people would live in sewers? And yet that's what they found in New York a few years back. I don't know what he saw down there. I'll tell you one thing. If we could get in there, I sure as hell wouldn't want to go down there alone. End quote. The sighting was later deemed as the Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster, and it is truly bizarre that no other such report like it has come in. And it is hard to say what the creature in question could possibly be, especially considering that it allegedly spoke. Concerning the witness himself, friends and family said that he was an honest and reliable man, and not prone to making up tales. And the Sun reporters who interviewed him said that he seemed honest and scared and reluctant to tell his tale at the time. What did he see down there? If anything, we may never know. The region where it was sighted has long had accounts from the natives where they speak of a race of small stature being humanoid in appearance that inhabited areas near waterways and perhaps something like this could have found a home down in the tunnel. We will probably never know for sure, but across the country and other parts of the world, there have been strange sightings of what people call skimwalkers and other thinly shaped humanoid creatures that lurk around various parts of the states and other parts of the world as well. Could this have been one of those? Maybe, but I wouldn't want to find out. Since the early decades of the 20th century, Reports of large humanoid creatures have been widely recognized in Canada and the United States. They are best known by names such as Sasquatch, Bigfoot, and the Swamp Ape. These North American representations of these creatures also have counterparts in other parts of the world. China's Hubei province has long been regarded as a possible home for some variety of these creatures equivalent to the North American Sasquatch, with legends and folktales dating far back throughout the decades, which appear to recount such observations of these creatures. Traditions hold that areas and parts of the mountainous region of the Shanangia Caves, where there is legend of the creature called the Yiren, 
This creature is told to have existed in times past, if not still today. Acknowledging this tradition, one famous cave that remains a cultural landmark in this region bears this name for the creature above its entrance. Emblazoned on the stone in bright red paint, as a reminder of the long-held beliefs about them said to inhabit the mountains, the stories about China's Yiren and sightings of the creatures have also occurred in the recent decade, which included reports around the Hubei province in 1976 that even saw attention from the New York Times. The series of incidents began in 1976 with sightings of a hairy creature in the mountainous region around the border. They were described as being covered in reddish, wavy hair. Being at least 8 feet in height, the stories were claimed to the point that the Chinese Academy of Science organized an expedition in March of 1977, sending 110 biologists, zoologists, and photographers in pursuit of this creature. They were provided backup with soldiers accompanying them, and the team of scientists were armed with tranquilizers, rifles, and dogs to lend support in search for this creature. Theories about the creature range from it being some undiscovered large primate to being a possible descendant of the Gigantopithecus, which is a prehistoric ape recognized from little more than jaw and skull fragments recovered in archaeological sites in central Indonesia. Teeth were also recovered at the time of the discovery of these remains. One of the earliest notable sightings from this time involved a group of county officials who were traveling together in a jeep along a back road at approximately 1 a.m. when they stopped in the presence of something in the road ahead of them. They described it as a large animal with reddish hair. The creature appeared to be laying in the road dead, and the men were able to approach it within six feet of the animal. Unsure of whether it was truly dead or not, one of the men tossed a stone at the animal and upon their surprise, the creature rose slowly from the ground and ran off into the forest. The officials were so scared and amazed by what they had seen that they sped back to their station at the county seat and immediately sent a telegram to the Academy of Science, which became the reason for the organization investigation into the creature's presence in the region. A team of scientists was immediately dispatched to the area where the encounter had taken place, but by this time there were no signs of the creature, although footprints and even droppings believed to have belonged to it were located near the vicinity. This, in tradition to hair samples found on the tree bark nearby, that appeared to suggest the presence of a primate. One thing researchers with the Academy of Science could conclusively discern was that the creature was fairly large, with many footprints it left behind measuring anywhere from between 12 and 16 inches in length. Eyewitness testimony was also collected from locals in the area who had claimed to have seen it, which included one resident who said she observed the animal fleeing while carrying a small pig under one arm, and based on descriptions of the creature, it was believed to be approximately 8 feet 6 inches tall. Some descriptions also noted that along with the red hair covering its body and a terrible smell. Although the search for this possible living fossil had been unsuccessful, it nonetheless marks one of the largest official expeditions to go searching for a Sasquatch-like creature anywhere in the world in recent decades. If the reports from around that time are to be believed, some population of this large creature could still be alive in the remote regions, perhaps even to this day. What do you guys think? Thanks for watching. Till next time.